I'm Chosen Architect, and this is Project Architect 2. Now, last episode, we did the unthinkable. We set up spatial storage and actually used it to store space, wouldn't you know? And not only to just store space, but to store our factories. For example, this is our factory room, which is processing our ores, and I can make it show up into existence here in the overworld. But if I don't want it here in the overworld, I can just send it back to the spatial dimension and I can store it inside of a chest to be recalled later on. Today, we're going to be working on the crafter madness area. And this area is just like you may see. It's going to be all about crafters, but there's actually a lot more that we have to do. Um, but the main thing that we're going to be focusing on is automating several different things that technically don't have EMC. And to do this, we're going to be able to utilize the Tome of Alcastery inside of some RF tools crafters. And we should be able to use that to automate this successfully, uh, provided that we give it enough redstone, of course. Now I have everything to be able to craft this minus the eye of the storm, I do believe. Uh, oh no, actually we do have the eye of the storm. That's right, because we unlocked everything. But if you do not have the Eye of the Storm, you can actually get it by throwing, for example, like a charged snowball at a creeper and charging it up and then killing it. And there is a chance of you getting the Eye of the Storm from a charged creeper. Keep in mind, though, a little uh, little tip, um, if you want to be able to um, get the drop a lot faster, you can actually use the Magic Bane on it. Um, and this actually gives you a higher chance of getting those drops, uh, those reliquary drops specifically off of those mobs. So definitely, definitely use this if you haven't already made it to the end game like I have, where you have learned all of the EMC items. So with that knowledge, which I didn't actually know I had, I can go ahead and craft this book. I thought I was going to have to go on an adventure where I was going to have to take down those creepers. But no, we can actually get started right away which is fantastic. So let's dive into how we can automate this book because I've not done this before. Um, so we should be able to grab also a RF tools crafter. Um, so a tier one crafter should be more than enough. Uh, the only difference between the, the tier crafters is not speed, but it's just how many crafting slots you have available to you. So a tier one should get the job done. Let's get a gate so we can get this thing powered up. Um, and just, we need to figure out how we're going to automate this. So we do know that the tome in its own right, uh, I think if this is like charged on, we should be able to make a recipe where it uses redstone, right? So let's grab some redstone blocks, some basic redstone blocks, just like that. And what we can do is make a recipe where it uses those redstone blocks and it receives a charge. Um, so it looks like that receives a charge of nine and then goes up. And it, I don't know, I don't think this has to be charged up like this. So let's actually change that and let's set it like this. Beautiful. So um, we want this to actually go back into the insert. So let's actually select the recipe pattern, select that. And then we want the, uh, the product here. We want what it's finished product to go back into this slot right here. Um, so hopefully the value that's changing here on the durability doesn't change the actual slot, but what we want is it to kind of loop back through. And so having that go back in the insert is going to be something that we want it to do. Okay, beautiful. So now that that's done, we can go ahead and save that and hit apply. Um, and we should see that actually running, but we are not. Hmm. I wonder, I wonder, wonder, wonder. Maybe I have to back out or maybe place the items in. Oh, there we go. So I place the items back in. You can see that it's charging up. Okay, that's beautiful. So it is working. Um, but now we need to make a recipe for what item is going to essentially be duplicated uh, whenever it has enough to be duplicated. And that's kind of what the tome does, right? The tome has the ability to duplicate certain items. So it takes a value and then it gives you two of the prior that it received. And there's a lot of different things that we can do here. We can do like gold, silver, uh, obsidian. It looks like we can do sand, copper, tin, a bunch of different ingot types, which definitely work. And even nether stars, which we are definitely gonna need nether stars. And emeralds, do not forget emeralds because we're gonna need a ton of those using this process as well. So I guess for right now, let's try emeralds. 
So, and we'll see how this kind of functions. So let's go to the recipe tab here and we'll say, send this and combine that with an emerald. And you can see it gives me the output of two emeralds. Now we want this to be on exit C because I want the thing that it is crafting with to go back into the uh, input, but I want the result to go out. Now here's where I don't know how this is gonna work. So we're gonna have to figure this out together. Uh, but if I put, for example, this in, and let's also grab some redstone so we can see how it all functions together. Uh, block of redstone, it's all hidden in here because we have so many ingredients unlocked. There we go, redstone block. So if I put this in here and let that fully get charged up, okay, that is perfect. Um, and then I put the emeralds after learning this and I hit apply and I put a stack of emeralds in here. How is that going to work? Okay. So it looks like we need to su supply it with redstone, but we also need to supply it with emeralds going back in so that way we get emeralds as an output back. Am I seeing that right? I think so. Okay, so I'm trying to think about how I'm going to route this around, but for right now, let's go ahead and get these slots locked in. Um, and what I want to do is I typically like to give it some wiggle room, uh, but if you give it one slot, that should be plenty. Uh, we need to shut this off, so I'm going to set only activate. Make sure the redstone's in here. And I should be able to learn these slots that everything is assigned to. Let's pull that out. Um, and I'm going to use something like gravel, for example, to fill in the rest of these slots. You could leave them open, but for right now, I just want to make sure nothing gets kind of backed up when we start feeding items into here. So I'm going to hit remember, and that should, oh, so long as I don't hit the wrong button. If you hold down shift, it actually clears those. Uh, but those should now stay consistent where they're at. Um, and let's go ahead and try this out. So I have the uh, EMC up here. And then that is going to be sending redstone blocks into the system. So we can set that like so. And you can see those are filling up. And we can speed this up, by the way. Um, so don't, don't think that this is too slow. Because, I mean, it is too slow at the moment. But what I need is I need to pull that redstone back out some way. And I might do that, um, so I, I don't know. I'm gonna, for right now, place a block on the side. This can be configured in a bunch of different ways. Uh, but I want this to pull and send into the barrel. And then over here, I want another barrel. Um, and I want this to split and route back into here. And let's see if we can't get, for example, like a barrel right here to have another input. Uh, I think laser IO still might be the best option for this, but this kind of lets me visu visualize it, right? So that's going to insert here, but we also want this to split. And you can see how that's going to send to two locations. And then I want this to pull out the product. Okay, with that, I should be able to turn this on. That's going in here. Oh, okay, so I think we can only ex extract from the bottom. So I'm going to have to change this up a little bit. So let's turn that back off. I'm going to put the emeralds back in, and I'm going to rearrange this. And I think it's at this moment where I think Laser I.O. is going to be the best option here. Now, Laser I.O. has some really powerful things that it can do, and one is interacting with any side of the block that we see here. So let's go ahead and do this. Just for example, I'm going to place it right here, and I want our main barrel to be right here that is going to have a compacting upgrade that is going to compact our emeralds. So how is this going to function? So I have myself a card holder here, and I've inserted in a bunch of item cards. And so if I open this up, we can now see the individual sides. And Laser IO is really cool. It allows us to send items from one location essentially to another. And we can interact with any of the sides of the blocks. So I need to access the bottom side of this block. And we need to make an extract that pulls from the bottom. Since the crafter likes, well, items to be pulled from the bottom of it. Um, so, even though we're accessing the crafter, whenever we put a card, an item card in here, and we have it set to extract, we actually get to choose where we're pulling from. The way we do that is by selecting this slot right here, and we'll set it to down, and that is going to pull from the down side of the block. Um, and that should be basically it for at least letting this system know, hey, I'm pulling items from the output slot. So now I need to figure out how I'm going to route this back in. So that's another thing I'm going to have to do. So we're going to technically have two insert cards. 
We need one to insert back into here, and we need another insert card to insert into here. And this is where another powerful part of Laser O comes into play, and that is priorities. So we need to send back into this. So we're gonna have a insert card. Uh, and by the way, all of these can be changed on channels, but we're not gonna worry about that right now. Everything's just gonna be on the white channel. Essentially, the channel is like a pipe. And if we change the color, that's gonna be a new pipe. Um, but in this case, we're just gonna stick with that one. So the cool part about this, like I said, is priorities. And the higher the priority, the uh, the uh it'll be the first for the item to go into, the first inventory the item goes into. So if this one is set to one, it's going to place it into here before it goes into an insert card that is on zero. Um, so that's all we have to do is set the priority on this to one to make sure it goes back in here first or tries to, and then we can connect up to the barrel. And that's where we'll put an insert card here and we'll just leave this alone on zero. And essentially this solves all of our problems. That's why I said I think laser IO is the best solution for this problem. Of course, figuring out how to clean this up and make it look a lot nicer is going to be um, something that we can do. But for right now, this does the job um, and is going to do it exactly like I want it to work, or so I hope. Um, so to turn this on, let's go ahead and turn it on, and we should see the items going back in here, hopefully. Uh, the insert card should be able to send, I think, into the front, unless we have to tell the insert card specifically to interact with the top. But that shouldn't be the case. It is pulling items out. Oh, it is working, it's just slow. So this is where we have to go in here and actually play around with the speed upgrades for our cards. And then my friends is where the overclocker upgrades come into play. So back in here on the extract card, what we can do is add four of these overclockers and we can set the transfer limit to 64 and then we can set the ticks to one. So now it's going to be moving 64 every tick and you can see that is staying constantly full and now we are gaining emeralds in here now we have to speed this up essentially by giving it more redstone so if we go into industrial four going i should be able to speed this up and hopefully this is going to be fast enough if not we might have to use some other pipes uh but we should be able to click this with those speed cards that's going incredibly fast that is now keeping up that's going faster and then now to speed this up even further by putting it in fast mode. And it being in fast mode is now going significantly faster. So fast, so, so much faster that we can't even see it operating outside of just this inventory. So I think I've come up with a much better solution than of course this, which was for me to kind of wrap my head around, which I do like to do when I'm setting up uh, more advanced things to kind of get an understanding of how at least one machine is going to work. And so I've devised this monstrosity, which is four of them, we're probably going to do this also for nether stars, but for right now, I have this set up. And in here, I'm going to show you some tips and tricks when playing around with laser IO. So I know I have four machines here. So what I can do is I can drag four cards out just like this, and I can set them up and do them all in one go. So um, I should be able to open up my card holder, right? And I can right click on this and set this to extract. And we know we want the extract to be on the down. Um, now, as far as the overclockers go, we probably are going to have to do the overclockers all by hand um, because I'm almost positive I can't, yeah, I can't do the overclockers when they're in stacks, but I can go ahead and at least get them defined and also get this config defined. Um, and then we also need four cards that are going to be separated here. These are going to be our four insert cards that are going to insert back. And if you remember, we set that to priority one. And then I need four more insert cards. And these insert cards are going to go, uh, and they're just gonna be left alone, but these are going to go into the barrel that we're gonna put down uh, here in a little bit. Uh, now we're also gonna need an extract. We might end up needing four extract cards. I'm gonna have to figure that out. Uh, but for right now, we're just gonna have one extract on each of these. So I'm gonna place that in just like so. And you can see they're going in each one of these. And then I can go in here and I can add my cards and make sure to get those speeds maxed out and do that for each one. And then in each one of those, we have to get our high priority insert back. That's just going to insert back into each one of those. Beautiful. And now I am not going to worry about it just yet, but the barrel is going to go down here, but I still need a way to access this inventory uh, because we are going to have a EMC link on here. Uh, and here's where I hope that this is going to be able to feed fast enough. Um, with 64 every tick that might be quick enough 
I'm going to need my shrinking device and I can lower myself just like this. Okay. So on the top here, which is going to be redstone, let's go ahead and grab the redstone block. We want to define that on here. And then inside here, we'll have an extract card that is going to be fully upgraded. We'll place that in extract, put the upgrades 64 every tick. Um, and that extract is going to need to send to all of these insert cards that are on the high priority. Now, with this setup, we are going to have to do something a little bit different. Um, so this right here is technically sending to all of these, and we have two cards in this slot. Now, what this will do is this is going to kind of rotate through these two cards, bouncing back and forth, and it won't run them simultaneously. We have to actually put an upgrade in each of these slots to allow it to work simultaneously. And those upgrades are called node overclockers. And you're going to want you're going to need one node overclocker if you want to run more than just one simultaneously. You have to you'll end up needing uh, eight of these in total if you were to max this entire nine by nine slot out. Now, something that I'm going to kind of note here, uh, I am going to be using the same channel for handling redstone and also handling our uh, our output. Um, so both of these are going to be all going through the same channel, um, which we're going to have to keep in mind whenever we hook our barrel up, because our barrel is going to cause some problems if we don't use some filters. Now, thankfully, we can actually break this crafter. And if I remember correctly, you can place it back and it holds its contents in memory. So that is very, very nice. So we don't have to worry about uh, like it breaking this to be able to access our block that we're about to place down so let's place down a barrel and we are going to need this upgrade that this is running i'm going to go ahead and break this for right now um i'm going to go ahead and place this down beautiful so now we have our barrel and we have our upgrade in here and we need to tell this hey now extract with a regular card on a regular priority we need to send down but before i do this before i place it in because i don't want it sending redstone which it will into there um, I need a filter. So we can make a regular filter card, a basic one. And I can tell this, hey, by grabbing some redstone here, I can say, hey, in the filter, I want to deny redstone. That way it will not send redstone through this card. Uh, and the way we can do that filter, we place the filter in this slot right here. And you can see we are now going to be denying redstone into that slot. Uh, and we want to make sure we grab out the right one. I think I end up placing it in here. There we go. We're going to place it there. And that should be good. We shouldn't see redstone going in. The only thing that should go in here is any residual, um, any of our residual emeralds. So now at this point, I should be able to just give this some power. And this should start working. Uh, and I need to make sure this is powered up. Okay. It looks like the emeralds went in, but the emeralds are not finding their way back okay they have found their way back and they are now dumping in here okay so i think they just ran out because there was only one um and now it is looping okay and it does appear like the one extract is able to keep up with all of these and then i can place this on here that should start to fill up and now we should see this hopefully going incredibly fast or at least faster than that was running it doesn't really seem like it's going any faster, though. No, the reason why it doesn't seem like it's going faster is because these all need to be in fast mode. So now with them in fast mode, that should look significantly faster. Or so I would hope. I might need some sort of extraction on this. This one, for some reason, isn't keeping up. Ah, interesting. I thought something was off because I removed both of these crafters right here, and I noticed that these two are not working. Let me turn them back on to ignored. Okay, that is working. Turn that to ignored. That also seems to be working. Okay, and then I can start to place these back in. And start to kind of see the power gains. Okay. That appears to also be functioning. I can see the emeralds in here. I guess these are just pulling out so fast that I can't see the actual operations happening, which is very interesting. This now I can see, but these two I do not see, which is kind of interesting. I, I don't know. They are working uh, because you can see them functioning right here. 
with the lasers. Um, hmm, interesting. But I, I guess this is now running, and it is running a lot faster now that these are in fast mode. And interesting, that is not filling with power, which is another thing. I'm, like, so confused by these. Now, with these machines, technically, I can help with the power consumption uh, that these are taking, because it does seem like these do take quite a bit of power uh, for each of these. But what I can do is I can just infuse each one of them. Um, so this is a pretty straightforward uh, task. So all you have to do is place the crafter in here and go into RF tools and grab some of these dimensional shards. And you need four stacks to infuse this at 100%. And of course, the temporal pouch really helps speed this up. And each one of those, you just get it all the way infused up to 100%. Now, the same setup here should also work for the nether stars. Uh, and also anything that is, like I said, in this list right here. So lapis, any of these ingots, and so on and so forth. Uh, like, it might be a really good thing to, or way to do these golden ingots. I, I don't know, but I still think the other method is very, very quick for generating ingots, so maybe not. Um, but for nether stars, this is going to be an incredibly fast way of getting nether stars. Um, so we have to build out the recipes the same way, and I've gotten pretty quick at building the recipes. So a little quick tip. Whenever you are building the recipes, just select this. Make sure you set that to insert. Place your tome that is directly in here, in there. Add your redstone, and all you have to do is hit apply. Uh, and then for the next step, you need to have, for example, like a full uh, tome. And then all you have to do for this is set this to exit C, place in your tome that is full and the thing that you want to make, and then hit apply, and there you go. That is as simple as it is, and you can just keep repeating that process. So as far as nether stars go, I'm going to be using a barrel to hold these nether stars as they continue to build up. Uh, but this should all be configured the exact same way I set this one up. Um, all of my different configuration cards and also a filter on the bottom here that is filtering out the redstone. So as, aside from that, this should all function. Uh, I just got to get some power on here. And as soon as we have that, we should be ready to go. And by the way, I'm using gates on these particular things, um, even though it would be better to have flux networks, but I am using gates on these because the dimension, I can't actually send the uh, the points for some reason from flux networks, uh, but I can send gates. So let's go ahead and turn this on. And as soon as this is up and running, this should be producing nether stars. Or so it should. Oh, that's right. Because we have to feed it kind of uh, enough nether stars to kind of get it jump boosted. But once we do that, then all of them should kick on. And we're going to be producing nether stars faster than any typical mob farm would allow nether stars to be produced. And just like that, you can see the nether star numbers climbing. That is significant. Now, I was doing some testing and I just discovered that I can actually accelerate these tomes by changing this recipe right here. Instead of just doing one, I can instead do it like this. And whenever I hit apply, this will start to go significantly faster. Um, so I will go in here and I'm just going to modify these recipes. Hitting apply. And that now charges so much quicker. Uh, because you can refill this much faster. Oh, that's the wrong recipe. This one right here. So yeah, I'm going to do this for all of them, including the emerald. You can even see the bar going up. It's going to do 72 per craft, whereas before it was going much, much slower. Um, so it's only doing one, which is a seven per craft. And now... Every time it does it, it does 72. That is so much faster. And I can do that for all of these. So this is going to benefit from it as well, I believe. So if I hit apply, that's now going even faster than it was before. So yeah, uh, definitely worth doing it this way. Now, I also did a bit more significant testing, and I will say that I think I messed up uh, just a little bit. Um, and the reason I say that is because I tested a tier three crafter and I thought they all crafted the same speed, but they don't. And I also tried something else to see if I can use a higher tier crafter to do multiple crafts in one go. Uh, that definitely does not happen, even if you rename the items. Uh, but what you have right here is what appears to be going faster. I'm not even supplying it enough power right now to run uh, at its full potential, I don't think. Um, let's try a ender gate. See if we can give it more power. So yeah, it does seem like it's going significantly faster than this tier, 
which at max speed is seeming a bit slower. I guess I've never had a craft where it really showed like that. Um, so I always assumed that they just went the same speed. But I guess I was wrong. Yeah, I was 100% wrong on that one. Now for that, I'm going to have to punish myself by going through and exchanging all of these for tier threes. Uh, yeah, that's going to be a process. So you know what? I think I'm going to keep all of these the same. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to basically duplicate this whole setup. Uh, but I'll use an entangled block and I should be able to use the same laser IO setup to entangle this. And I place all of these on the floor to configure them by hand. And it makes it a whole lot easier just making sure that I got everything set up correctly now. And these are all on tier threes. Now, all I have to do is entangle this block right here and make sure that it receives that same location right here. And the same for this one. I'll entangle this and place it right here. And so now laser IO should send the items into the corresponding areas. So we don't have to worry about having like multiple storages for the same thing. This should all function and send into it. So I should be able to turn these on now and give them some power with some gates. Oh boy. And I'm hoping that tier threes can handle all of this. So that's going to run. And I am going to have to stock these. Um, so I, all I have to do is feed it some redstone right on the top. So right here and right here. And both of these are assigned to redstone. And that should start rocking and rolling. Looks like I am going to need some emeralds to get this like fully jump started. Just making sure those have them in there. That now is filled with emeralds. That's filled with emeralds and that's filled with emeralds. Oh gosh. Okay. And that's rolling even faster than it was. Uh, and I don't, I don't think the nether stars are rolling here. So let's get those started by placing another star in there. And this system should keep itself in stock should I did configure everything correctly. So there it goes. And we have to put all of these in fast mode. Oh boy. And that's where things are really going to start going. Okay. So as soon as all of those are in fast mode, that should be flying. Now all of the items are going in there. Beautiful. And same for this. This is all in stock and we can monitor this by seeing how quickly these are filling up. So that is, is significantly faster. And if we take a look at here, I mean, it's really hard to tell what is actually going faster or not. Okay, so hear me out. I thought that the tier three crafter after doing even more testing was actually faster, but I think it's actually something to do with the way that I set this up with all of these individual books. And I think it's tricking it in some weird way because this is going significantly faster. Even the book is filling up and depleting significantly faster than this one is. Um, so it is a increase for sure in speed. Like that is going pretty darn fast compared to all of the other ones. Um, and so on and so forth. Right. I, I just have no idea why this one is particularly faster. I mean, I even thought maybe it was because I was giving it more redstone. So I tried it over here, but that's actually not the case at all. What I think might be happening is it's ignoring the fact that there's numbers here and what it's doing is it's feeding it incredibly fast because it is actually running it through each one of these individual crafts um, and filling it up. And then it is proceeding to do the craft operation here. So I, I, I don't know. That's kind of my theory here. Maybe you guys know more information about how this works. Aha. Uh -huh, my theory does appear to be correct. So the more of these I add, it seems like the faster it is actively recharging. Also, the more laggy it's making. So as soon as I apply this, look how quickly now this is recharging. So the more of these recharges I add, it does appear the actual quicker the tome resets and allows it to work. That is so much faster. So yeah, I've done a little bit of work here and I think setting up three is like what it does feel optimal having three recipes running that and same on this side. If you take it any higher than that, this just kind of freezes up um, and it doesn't go any higher the more I add. So uh, even for this, uh, it's definitely worth putting this in. It's going to make it even faster because, uh, for example, it is spilling out like 10 items every operation now. So it's like flickering like this because of the way laser IO is working because laser IO can pull 
uh, at what with the way we have it configured, 64 items every single tick. So it's essentially pulling out all of those items. And we should see a significant increase in the amount of items that end up pulling up here. So I just found out something kind of interesting. So I loaded back in this dimension and notice my entangled blocks. Um, yeah, so we cannot use entangled blocks. Uh, what we're going to have to do is probably use a container and then pipe them because, yeah, cause this is just not going to work because for some reason we entangled them in the overworld. They're still technically entangled in this dimension. It locks it to that position, not to a data or state of the block or anything like that. So, yeah, so that that kind of means that this needs to be wrapped back up. And I need to load this back in and I've got to fix all of this uh, because otherwise it's going to start breaking all kinds of stuff. These cannot be entangled. They have to be piped in some way. Actually, I think this gives me the perfect excuse to utilize the actual function of the lasers. And that is that they can actually be connected to one another. Um, so I can go ahead and I can shift right click this one and right click that. And these are now linked together. Shift right click this one and right click this one. And now they're all linked together. And so technically, the outputs of this are all connected to all of these. Um, so that means that uh, the extractions are pulling from here and are actually linking up to this down card right here, allowing all of these to send to this one block. Oh, that works perfect. Honestly, I should have done this from the start. Yeah, this is how I should have managed all of this anyways. Ah, just goofy of me. It's, I forget things from time to time. It's it's super easy to do. But there we go. So now they're all linked together, this side and this side. And now with that, I'm going to have to clean this mess up. I will store that away. Beautiful. And bring this back. And we shouldn't have that issue happening anymore where these items are entangled, essentially storing all of those blocks. And same for this side. We definitely don't want... Nether store, a uh, nether star stopping up our system, which is what it was doing. But with that, I think we're nearing the end of today's episode. That was kind of complex. And it, honestly, I, I got to give it to you if you made it through that entire episode. It was a whole lot of technical parts of Minecraft. And I do feel like Laser AO is pretty technical um, and kind of hard to demonstrate and kind of show as everything happens inside of a GUI. But it is very powerful and allows for very compact things all to be handled just like we set up. And it also handles things incredibly fast. So if you did enjoy today's episode, be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already and give this video, of course, a huge thumbs up. And with that being said, it's now time for me to thank the amazing supporter of today's episode. And that amazing thanks is going to go out to Ark. Thank you so much for your amazing support and choosing to support me over on the Discord by becoming a Discord premium member and supporting in one of the best ways possible. I thank you guys all so, so very much, and I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Hopefully you learned something new, and as always, guys, I look forward to seeing you in the next one, and yet again, as always, thanks for watching. Bye!